this is a different kind of video and I've been wanting to do this for a while now. This will kind of just be split up into three different videos to see if it helps anyone at all because when I went through this I didn't I didn't really think about going to YouTube and I didn't really seek out help this way. So we live in a different world now where people go to YouTube for a lot of things. So if this ends up helping you, then I'm glad. Okay, so this first part is about uh, when my mom got diagnosed with breast cancer. Don't worry though, I probably will not cry because I want this to be uplifting. Like, this crap happens and I always thought that like my mom would be invincible and like nothing bad would ever happen to her and it did. Watch this if you are in this situation or or not. I mean, I if you want to watch this just to watch it, that's fine. So it all started in January of 2008. My mom started getting like this weird like back pain here like um, around her spine and then her ribs and like it slowly like started getting a little bit like more intense and so she went to the doctors and they said well no it's just arthritis bomb then they, she did like x-rays and mris and cts and they're like no 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 it's fine and the whoever whoever wrote <laughs> the report of my mom being like fine was wrong because there was something up march 2008 that same year, um, my mom and I and the rest of my orchestra, we went to Carnegie Hall. Well, we went to New York. We went to Carnegie Hall. Hashtag work dork for life. While we were there, my mom's pain just intensified a lot. And like to the point where she could barely breathe. May of that year, I, how the heck did, I don't even know. Like she just, wow, I'm just thinking about that now. Like she was an insane amount of pain and she just kept taking different medications and the doctors would just say the same thing but like no one freaking found it on time but the end of may of that year uh my mom was in bed and i think it was like a weekend and my aunt was a nurse and she got to our apartment she was like uh, -uh nope not maria my mom's name i haven't said her name out loud in a while i'm fine guys no tears yet. She said, you know, I think you should go to the, the hospital. So we went, they kept her, and I, being an only child, was like, what the freak is going on? Because I didn't have anyone to turn to, really. My aunt and my uncle, my aunt Estelle, who's now passed. Yeah, my uncle, yeah, they weren't blood family. To me, blood family doesn't mean much because I haven't had a great experience with family members. That's a whole nother story. Spent the night with my aunt and my uncle and June 4th was when my mom got diagnosed. They said she had cancer, but here's the thing. Here's what sucks. Okay, so advice for people who find out that, let's say a co-worker or, because here's the thing, my mom used to work at the hospital where she was staying and I ran into a doctor that knew her. And in, in an elevator, I was with my mom's coworker, and here it gets, mm. I had my food. I had just gone back from the cafeteria. I was on my way to my mom's room, and he said, oh, yeah, I heard about your mom. Don't worry. We're going to, they're going to take care of this cancer, blah, blah, blah. The moment he said cancer, I was like, I've died. I just died. Like, I lost feeling from my neck down. Everything was, like, black, but, like, Everything was fuzzy. I didn't hear a word he said after that. And I was furious. <laughs> because that's not how you're supposed to find out that your mom has cancer, right? <laughs> no. I mean, how is the right way to find out? I don't know. I also didn't really want to tell my mom because I was like, what if she doesn't know yet? And she had been told already that she had it. And I think she was going to tell me that day. I don't know. I don't know. But it sucked. But here's where it gets a little bit educational. So... Dr. Jaffer, godsend, he said, uh, okay, well, so it is cancer. We're trying to figure out if it's uh, liquid or um, like solid. So liquid would mean the blood, which is easier to treat than solid. So it wasn't liquid. So he was like, okay, well, it's not. So then they were trying to figure out exactly where the primary was. The primary means this is where it originated and that's, you know, that's the kind of cancer it is. The stage depends on like how spread out it is. They Well, they kept telling us they'd come in every few days and be like, okay, so it's not kidney, it's not pancreatic. And each time we're like, oh, thank God. Like, isn't that horrifying? 
life does not prepare you for those moments ended up being breast cancer. He said out of all the solid kinds of cancer, breast is the best one because there are multiple ways to treat it and there's so many different kinds and it's hormonal, not hormonal. Blah, blah. Again, I'm sorry, I should have said this earlier. I'm not a doctor, just a daughter of someone who went through crap. Uh, but yes, everything started happening. So for my mom, the stinking little tumor was right here. And it was tiny, tiny little thing, but it had already spread to her Fine to her sternum sternum to her ribs and I think that was it at that moment so that was June 4th when we found out but technically I guess later it didn't make sense for her to get a mastectomy because they wanted to start it from the outside it was spread here so they wanted to get that taken care of with chemo and radiation so the chemo yeah everything you've heard of yeah side effects like one that people didn't really tell us about too much was cold sores, or not cold sores, but like things on her tongue that like made her tongue very sensitive. Pink magic helps. Doesn't taste good, but it helps. Also, yeah, nausea. Crackers and Sprite help. Fenergan is really good too. These are just things. I'm not a doctor, again, but they've worked wonders on her. She was also on intense pain medication because it had spread to her bones. She did a whole bunch of rounds of chemo, lost her hair, wore a wig, only wore the wig on special occasions. But she liked her baseball hats, most of all. It was just easy, which I totally understand. I would totally wear the hat too. She rested a lot, didn't really go outside for too long, but sometimes she'd have good days. Those are things you can expect too, that they'll have good days, they'll have bad days. We watched a lot of Ellen, a lot of Oprah, a lot of Jimmy Fallon, a lot of I Love Lucy, just a lot of TV. And I would say that's one of the main reasons also why I want to work in this field. I just want to make people happy in case they're in situations like that. A lot of people, because we, you know, we would go to the hospital sometimes if her uh, like white blood cell count was too low and all of that. A lot of people would say, oh, you should be a nurse just because of how I cared for my mom. And I do want to say that I admire nurses, doctors, PAs, anyone that works in that field, CNAs. Like, you guys are amazing because I could never do that. But if your mom, if your dad, like, if anyone you know is going through cancer, just know that, like, nurses are, are there the most. So like really reach out to them, you know, don't feel afraid to ask questions. I did stay in the hospital for quite a while. At the beginning, it was like two weeks when she got diagnosed and I was sleeping on a couch and they were, the nurses were great. They, they looked out for me. As far as radiation goes, radiation, she, her skin got a little bit darker because obviously it's like the rays, so it's not like smoothing, you know. The side effects weren't as bad. She was also on a chemo pill which was fantastic at that time i was like oh my god everything is way fine it was literally just a chemo pill and of course if you're if your mom or your sister your aunt if they get diagnosed or even guys guys can get breast cancer too um, if they're diagnosed at an earlier stage obviously the chance of beating it is much higher so chemo pill is kind of like normal to get into remission but again so my mom was stage four there is no stage five and made things a lot more complicated and I think a lot of what helped us keep going forward and not thinking about all the statistics was just hope for the best and we'd just be like screw it screw everyone else it's fine those are just statistics like I'm different and you can't listen to all these statistics there was one time I think I took a class at a high school for something my mom was diagnosed when I was 16 um but yeah like <laughs> I saw a sign and it was like 25% of people, well, I don't know, it was like a really freaking scary statistic and like my mom was going through that and I was like, really? F you guys! <laughs> I don't, I don't cuss and I don't really do the middle finger, I do the ring finger, so yeah, so that, that was a mess. Let's see, other things, food, some foods they're just not gonna like, so just don't take offense to it. If you cook something and they're like, mm -hmm. try it, obviously, try it first, make sure it's like not crap. Um, also, they can't really have like a lot of raw things because their immune system is lower. So you just also have to be careful yourself uh, as far as like, you know, not getting sick. Uh, there was one time things, it was a close call. She had a cough and then it turned into pneumonia and I had a cough too and I thought I was good. And like I felt so bad afterward because she ended up in ICU and 
her blood cell count was like super low and it was just all kinds of bad and it was just because she got sick so obviously be very careful wash your hands like crazy wash their food like crazy the whole situation of just getting told that your mom has cancer sucks getting told that it's stage four sucks even more because a lot of people don't get told that at least people just don't talk about it my mom always said after that like your health comes first period that's something that i've really taken to heart and i really feel it's important that we take care of ourselves first over anyone else that's not being selfish because you can't be there for other people unless you're there for yourself first if that makes sense my mom skipped mammogram sessions or appointments because she didn't want to get off from work and it hurts me because i don't know as a teenager you just kind of don't think about those things like i said i thought my mom was invincible so make sure if you're watching this also like if your parent is healthy fantastic keep them that way okay remind them like take care of yourself have you gone get gotten a pap smear have you gone to get your mammogram your what's it but guys what do you guys have i know this i'm sorry this is like super conversational that i wasn't prepared to talk about that where they grab your balls okay like whatever that is um make sure that your loved ones are getting checked because early detection really does save lives but I'm also here to tell you that in case your parent, your family member does not get detected early, these are just things to expect and it's just going to be a lot harder. But also just like cherish the moments that you do have with them and do not listen to anyone else that tells you like, especially people that are not doctors, they're like, oh, well, you know, you need to stop pushing her so hard. You know what? Shut it. Because you don't know what's going on between us. People would tell me that a lot. They'd be like, Amy, you know, like you really, you just can't force your mom. I never forced my mom to do anything. I told her pretty early on, like, I'm here for you. But if you ever want to just not, I'm also here for you and I'm going to be okay. Especially near the end. So, screw everyone else. You're there helping them. The caretaker, it is insanely draining emotionally, physically, spiritually, like every kind of way. But it's worth it when you get those moments with them. Yeah, there's a lot of crappy memories that I have from my mom battling cancer. But I also have really good ones. There was one time where we went and we got fish from the church because it was, it was like Friday and Lent. Um, and we were really, really hungry. But we were in, we were going to wait to eat at home. And <laughs> we were at the bank account like drive through thing. And they were just taking forever. And my mom was like, I'm really hungry. Do you want to just eat the fish now? I was like, yeah, let's freaking do it. So then we did. So it's kind of like that. You know, you just kind of look at life differently. And in a way, I could say that that's what cancer made me see. Like, make sure to take care of myself. And realize that life is short. You just got to do things. Don't listen to other people. Focus on you. Obviously, like, if you're hurting yourself, listen to other people. Like, take care of yourself. Again, this is just the first part of it. I think we did a good job. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave those comments down below. Subscribe, whatever, all that jazz. Um, I feel weird saying that. I don't know. If I can help you guys in any way, please let me know. And I will make sure to answer any questions that you do have. And if I don't know the answer, I will try to point you in the right direction. So I will see you guys later for parts two and three. Two is going to get a little serious. I'm going to say that. Three is going to be very uplifting. Okay.